Welcome into Seattle Seahawks today. I am Tom Downey here to break down some rumors and a couple news items around the Seahawks. We're going to begin with a pretty unusual one that I came across about trading away Jamal Adams. This comes to us from Seahawks Draft Blog. Now, the title is fairly provocative. It gets the people going. I, I do want to give them credit. It's a pretty well thought out argument in favor of it. So I'll break it down why I'm in the end in against it. But there are some good and some good arguments for this particular move. The main arguments were Adams is about to get paid a significant amount of money. And the Seahawks have some holes at other key spots. And money is tight when you look at the current salary cap picture for the Seattle Seahawks. My number one issue is... Jamal Adams was highly impactful for this Seahawks team. Now, I know he's a safety, but 83 tackles, 11 tackles for loss, 9.5 sacks, and 3 pass breakups. Now look, Adams is not an every-down edge rusher, so it's a little bit unusual and frankly different than what you're used to seeing in terms of how the Seahawks generated their pressure. I think in an ideal world, it's just your defensive lineman getting home. That wasn't the case with the way that Seahawks team was built this past year. And once they got Carlos Dunlap, things were much better. And there is an argument, by the way, in the things that a safety typically does, Adams was not great in. His coverage stats were pretty middling. He, When he was targeted, he allowed 78% of those to be completed. And there were a couple times he was just outside of it and maybe a fully healthy Jamal Adams, which he was certainly not last year. We've gone through the litany of injuries that he had. Maybe that impacted him. And in the end, his 9.5 yards per target, that's pretty damn high for a safety. But he had 9.5 sacks. He was all over the field against the run, so it balances out in the end. Overall, I thought he was pretty great for Seattle. Where you start to have some issues is, is when it comes to roster building, right? You've invested in Quandre Diggs. You've invested in Jamal Adams. Both of those guys have fairly high cap hits as they enter the last years of their respective contracts. And that's an issue when your top two corners, when healthy, Shaquille Griffin and Quinton Dunbar are also free agents. Remember, you can move on from Adams and save just under $10 million. That's a lot of money to play with. But, uh, and then you got to look on the offensive line, right? You, I want a better offensive line. M Mike Ayupati, Ethan Posick. Eh. A, a good pitch was made by uh, Seahawks draft blog of what if you moved on from Jamal Adams and went out and paid a Brandon Schreff, for example, or, 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 or Joe Tooney. That, that, that is a valid argument to make of, well, what's more important, a, a safety or a guard? And they did put together one trade package, by the way, in terms of what they would do. Dolphins get Jamal Adams. Seattle gets the number 18 overall pick in 2021. Now, you are selling low on Adams. You're not getting back what you gave up. You, you got a, a year from him, and you actually move up in the 2021 draft, and their argument was take that pick and then trade down again. In the end, it, it was pretty well thought out, pretty well pitched. I am against it for a couple different reasons. I, I don't think it's the best path in the end for the Seahawks because my mindset is, Look, you love Adams for good reason. You gave up so much to get him. I'm unconvinced it would be the best way to build your roster. You can make an argument, especially if you're trying to rebuild and focus more on the future, but I don't think that's where Seattle's at. So before I dive into some money side of it, right, let me know in the comments. And this will be the pinned comment, by the way. So if you get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down and type your votes. Why for yes, you would trade Jamal Adams and we'll say for a first round pick or N for no, you would not. Now, part of this does depend on what Adams is going to command. Is he going to command a top-end safety contract? If you can get him today for $15 million per year, I think you do it. Because what do we know about contracts, folks? The longer you wait, the more expensive they become. And if you do it with a year left on his rookie contract, you can get very creative in terms of the way you structure it. In fact, if you were to pay Jamal Adams right now, you could set it up in a way where, relative to what his cap hit is right now, it would go down with an extension. Or, does Adams want to get paid like a top-end defensive player? If he's asking for $20 million, that gives me pause. And also, you probably knew that going into the deal for Jamal Adams. Seattle's acquisition of Jamal Adams unquestionably was a win-now move. 
And part of the argument that that Seahawks draft blog made was I that they don't want to invest and push dead money down the road. They they want to keep their cap clean, and I understand that. But you have a franchise quarterback in Russell Wilson. You're paying him a lot of money. I am of the belief that if you are trying to win now, which I do believe Seattle is, you should be ultra aggressive. You should extend players and kick their cap hits down the road. You can restructure and pay a Tyler Lockett, a, 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 a Quandre Diggs, etc., and actually free up money in the short term to pay other guys and fill their needs. Yes, you're light on draft capital, but if you're trying to win, let's just say it's a three- or four-year window, go all in. Yes, down the road, you have to deal with some cap implications. That'll be around the time you don't have your franchise quarterback anymore. And at that point, it's okay. Because you're not trying to win as badly as you are right now. So because of that, I would actually keep Jamal Adams. I would try to extend him and reduce his cap hit. And then go out and try and add some more pieces. Yeah, you're light on draft capital. You also got a really good defensive player in Jamal Adams. That defense overall was better. I would extend Carlos Dunlap and bring down his cap hit. Those are the ultra-aggressive moves I would make. Yes, it might hurt you in the you know five years from now or three years from now or whatever when the cap has gone up, by the way, but it helps me win right now, and that's what I'm trying to do with Wilson on the other side of 30 and Pete Carroll not having that many more years left in reality as Seahawks head coach. Now pay attention, we can get you guys a Russell Wilson or a Jamal Adams jersey. If you head over to chatsports.com slash bet and you use promo code Seahawks125, that will get you, wait for it, a 125% deposit bonus. Once you guys place a bet, we'll give you some examples here in a second, email us, Seahawks at chatsports.com. Now this deal, the BetUS jersey hookup, is only available for the rest of the month and to new customers only. So if you've done something before, sorry guys, you're not eligible. If you want to get in, you have questions, or you've already signed up and deposited, email us, seahawks at chatsports.com. Now everything's a lot easier once you guys place your first bet. So some free ones to go with or go against if you think I'm stupid. Chiefs minus 170 against the Bucks, and life's too short to bet the under. Give me the over in that game. They're not going to talk about Joe Biden. Give me the under on that one. But I'm a, I like the juice there, plus 120 right there. Over two matches of the Patriots, I think that happens. So those are just some bets there. Again, it's chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code is Seahawks125. Once you've signed up and deposit, or if you just have questions, email us, Seahawks at chatsports.com. News item here, Jaron Reed broke his own surgery news that he was undergoing. So he posted that on Instagram last night, I believe it was. He didn't say what the injury was, and as I film this, I haven't seen what the actual deal was in terms of the exact injury, but he did suffer an oblique injury late in the season. Whatever it is, it's not going to be a serious one because he played through it. That's not something that requires you to miss the beginning of the year, right? So whatever that surgery is for, he's going to be fine before the start of the 2021 season unless something goes terribly wrong, which it's not going to, right? Reed's start of 2020 was not great. I, I don't think he added his best stuff at the beginning of the season, but as the year went along, I do think Reed played much better. And he's under contract. He's got one year left. Another guy you could also try to extend and try and save some, some money on in, in the short and or long term. If you get Reed from, I'm just going to say the second half of the year, again, it's not a coincidence that once Carlos Dunlap came on, Jaron Reed started to play a little bit better as well, and the entire defense played better as a unit. You got to pay Puna Ford soon, but Reed's a key cog of that interior defensive line. You need him to be the guy he was in the back half of the 2020 season. Now, we're not going away this offseason. Yeah, the Seahawks don't have a first-round pick, and they're light on cap space and draft capital, whatever. We're going to keep you guys covered, though, on everything going on around the Seahawks. So if you want to stay up to date, hit that big red button and subscribe. Let's talk Jordan Brooks now. Bleacher Report pegged him as the team's top breakout candidate for 2021, and I'm inclined to agree. He was linebacker three for this team behind Bobby Wagner and K.J. Wright. But he did flash at times last year, and that's a good sign for Seattle. The, the, the key is for him to have a true breakout year, more playing time, and just simply put more growth in coverage as he moves forward. He was impactful in a 
what in the end was a little bit more of a run-stopping role. He was out there more often in three linebacker sets, and those are not obvious passing situations. So it was a little bit more geared to that, which I think makes sense. That was my big knock at him coming out of Texas Tech. His coverage stats in the end were solid enough. Targeted just 25 times. Again, it wasn't a, a super coverage-heavy roll. Allowed 17 completions, but only for 140 yards. So his yards per catch is actually pretty low. He didn't get beat a lot downfield. Now, I think at times Seattle helped cover him up a little bit. But in 2021, you're going to bring back Bobby Wagner, right? K.J. Wright, I'm a fan of, but you spent a first-round pick on Jordan Brooks. I don't want to be paying K.J. Wright $7 million or whatever and thus stunting the growth of Jordan Brooks. 2021 should be his breakout year or at least a big step forward and the full breakout comes in 2022 or whatever. So what do you guys think? Will Jordan Brooks break out next season for the Seahawks? If you think so, type in one for yes. If you don't, go ahead and type in a zero. Let's talk free agency again here. Marlon Mack. How about him as a target for the Seahawks? Fan sided pitch this, and as a Marlon Mack fan, I don't mind it. This only makes sense, frankly, or at least makes the most sense, I should say, if Chris Carson leaves in, free, in NFL free agency. Mack missed most of this past year with a torn Achilles. That is a major red flag. I don't know how good he's going to be when he comes back. But the last time we saw him fully healthy, he's pretty good. 247 carries, over 1,000 yards, hitting that 4.5 yards per carry average, 8 touchdowns. Their suggested contract was two years, $8 million. Some of that's incentives, non-guaranteed because of the injury. But if you lose Chris Carson, if you lose Carlos Hyde, you're looking at Rashad Penny, DJ Dallas, Travis Homer. That's not something I have a ton of confidence in. So because of that, I do think Marlon Mack could make some sense for the Seahawks. Again, it's always at the right cost. I might perform more like $3 million per year, or maybe it's just a one-year deal since he's coming off the injury, but that does make some sense for Seattle. Now, talking free agency in general here, who do you guys want the Seahawks to sign? Do, do you want them to target somebody uh, who's, who's a little bit a bigger option? Do, do you want them to, to pursue someone who would, would impact them in a much larger way, in a guard or, 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 a, or a, a cornerback there? Let me know in the comments who you guys want the Seahawks sign. It doesn't have to be realistic. It could be your dream target if you want, but let me know what you guys think. One last note here, a news item, new coach coming along for the Seahawks here. Andy Dickerson hired from the LA Rams to be the team's new run game coordinator. He had been the Rams' assistant offensive line coach as LA continues to get their coaching staff just poached by other teams out there. This was an open job. By the way, Brennan Carroll, yes, that's Pete Carroll's son, he left to be the Arizona offensive coordinator. Good for Brennan. Now, Shane Walter, who's going to be the offensive coordinator, brings in someone he has familiarity with to lead that run game. I think it's a good sign, by the way, that the Seahawks are allowing Shane Walden to bring in somebody he knows to lead the run game, something Pete Carroll desperately loves. So I think it's a good sign for Seattle. I'm not going to pretend to know just how great of a coach Andy Dickerson is. I'd never heard of him before today, but that is the news for Seattle.